Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. The 1.3.0 patch is now available for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for you to update your games. I'm gonna cover that and all of the patch notes in today's video. So we had the update yesterday about the brand new patch coming to Scarlet and Violet that was hinted at the end of April. It will be dropping today as of the 20th of April and with it there will be a number of fixes to go along with it. I'm a little bit later getting this video up today. I've been in the office today so I've literally just got home and we're going to cover all of the details now. We can hop over to Twitter and you can see Attention trainers, we would like to share some information on patch 1.3.0 for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So we'll get into that in a moment. If you are in your game though, and you wanna know how to update it, all you need to do is be on your home menu and press the plus icon on your controller and then software update if you haven't got auto updates on, and then you can go by the internet, it will check and then it will download and then it will update to the newest version on your Switch. So you can do that if you want. Of course, you can hold off maybe a day or so if you would prefer to, to see what kind of comes out. If any people are having issues with it, of course, the last update 1.2.0 did have a few issues after the update went live but hopefully fingers crossed all of those issues are resolved going forward in this new one so with this brand new 1.3.0 patch there was an update and all of the patch notes of course just a reminder that the initial reason why we got this update in the first place was to fix the bad egg issue players were experiencing in that walking wake and iron leaves terror raid event where players weren't updating their game before going into the terror raid battle and instead of experiencing one of the new paradox pokemon they were experiencing an egg which then you could actually go on to catch because there was no information at the time that this was a bad egg uh, but once the bad eggs in your box you can't unfortunately remove it and it is a highly illegal item that uh, you shouldn't have in your game and you can't really normally obtain in your game outside of illegal methods so it was a bit of an error on pokemon's behalf because they didn't put a flag in to force players to update before going into the terror raid events uh, this whole new patch is to fix that they are rerunning the event on the 1st of may and it'll be running for two weeks the players with this new update will then be able to go in and catch the walking wig or the iron leaves um, and ignore the egg unfortunately though there is a bit of a caveat with this blaine's posted this earlier just of a video of someone that did the update you can see here it is 1.3.0 uh, unfortunately though uh, when they go into their boxes after the update the bad egg is still there this patch does not get rid of the bag egg if you have got one if you were one of those unfortunate people that had the experience of going into the terror raid not updating your game and catching the bad egg then the bad egg will still be in your boxes uh, as of now there is no update from pokemon or nintendo about how to remove this bad egg if you did experience that in your games but hopefully somewhere down the line there will be a fix to this so you can remove it because it is something that you can't currently remove from your game getting on to the patch notes here support for trainers who caught an egg instead of walking wake or iron leaves we've covered all the details for that so we'll just jump down to the bug fixes here fixed a bug in link battles where selecting swap in just before the selection timer reached zero could fail to switch in the selected Pokemon and subsequently cause both the switching feature and the battle itself to act abnormally. So this is link battles, issues that players have had on there. This has been a fix. So hopefully the timer running down to zero and you swapping out on the zero doesn't cause any anomalies going forward. Uh, fix the bug in link battles where once the remaining time for the battle was under one minute, it would no longer be displayed where it was supposed to. So now that should display if the timer is running under zero and you're in a link battle. And the fixed a bug that occurred in link battles where depending on the move being used at the time a Pokemon fainted, the time trainer received to select their next Pokemon would be reduced, which seems really weird. These are really weird and unique bugs that are happening in link battles, but all resolved now going forward. In battles themselves, fix a bug where could chew ability would trigger again once every two turns after a trigger the first time contrary to what it is written in the ability description so this was an issue with could chew uh, in particular a lot of players took advantage of this on for where the berry would just continually uh, trigger every turn where it's not really meant to that has now been fixed 
uh, fixed a bug that occurred when Zoroark terrestrialized while using its illusion ability to disguise itself as another Pokemon. On the check status screen, the terrestrialized Zoroark's type would display as the original type of the Pokemon it had disguised itself as, rather than Zoroark's Terra type, which could be quite confusing for a lot of players, especially in battles and things, so that is fixed. Another issue that has been fixed that occurred when Zoroark used its illusion ability to disguise itself as another Pokemon that it had already terrestrialized. This bug caused Zoroark's type on its check status screen to incorrectly display as the terror type of the Pokemon Zoroark had disguised itself as. Again, a little misleading in the battle when that happens. And then the final double battles fix uh, affecting moves that cause stat changes for Pokemon using the moves. Uh, the bug caused the stat changes to incorrectly happen twice if the user hit two opposing Pokemon with the move while an opposing Pokemon was behind a substitute. So that seems like a really niche bug that was happening, but that has now been resolved. So they're all the kind of battle and link battle bugs that were still in the game, which is crazy to think we're so far into the competitive season. I'm assuming some of these have had an effect on some official competitive battles as we been going through the season so far. Nice to see that they are still working and fixing things though for going forward. Uh, other things, Pokemon Go connectivity, main issue causing the game to crash on the screen used to pair with Pokemon Go accounts. So that's a good one. There was a lot of issues when that connectivity first came in and you had the Vivalon kind of postcard event where you could get the Vivalon, different Vivalon forms in your game. That was something I personally experienced. So that crashing has been fixed. Hopefully any other issues surrounding that will have been fixed as well and fixed a bug affecting trainers who received Hisuian Zoroark from the mystery gift screen as a special early purchase bonus for the hidden treasures of Area Zero for Pokemon Scarlet or Pokemon Violet without first having seen Zoroark in the game. The bug caused Zoroark to be incorrectly displayed as registered in these trainers Pokedexes. So that has now been resolved um, and other select bug fixes have been implemented, which there is no further information on. So that is all the stuff that we've got directly from Pokemon in regards to the patch notes. The other selected bug fixes, I have no idea what they're referring to there. It doesn't go into any detail about performance issues or anything like that, that the initial patch, which was 1.2.0, was meant to fix. And there's no mention about the save data glitch that a few select players have experienced where they lost their entire save file from the Switch after the last update so that hasn't been explored it hasn't been talked about in this article of patch notes so you would assume that this probably is still an issue although fixing the things like the Zoroark and fixing the things like the Vivalon event do give me a little bit of hope to say that probably the things that were causing it in the first place have been fixed but obviously nothing can be concrete about that because nothing's been mentioned in the patch notes itself it would be nice to get a little bit more elaboration on them but i guess this is as good as it's going to get for now hopefully like i say it does fix a lot of the issues going on that players had been experiencing with the vivalon event with the zoroark when they had downloaded it whether or not that had a knock-on effect to the save data of the games but if it does happen to you do refer back to one of the videos that we covered about the save data glitch where it is recoverable now you can contact nintendo and they will be able to recover the data thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode i hope you found it useful again apologies about this one being a little late i would have liked to have dropped this as soon as the patch came out with those notes but being at work today this is the first chance i've had so let me know what you think about the patch and all of the notes that are going with this update i'd love to hear your opinions on what you think of it in general and when do you think we are going to get Pokemon home? That's a big question, right? And you've got to assume that will be the next update. Do subscribe to the channel. Stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Skull and Violet content. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye. <laughs>